six months after people. While nature attacks some of the bodies and structures left behind, she preserves others. In the barren wastes of Ross Island, Antarctica, are the huts used in the early 20th century by explorers Robert Scott and Ernest Shackleton. Here, with an average temperature of three below zero, the ravages of decay have been slowed. Inside and out, the huts remain frozen in time. With the severe cold in Antarctica, a lot of the insects that would gnaw away at the wood structure uh, don't exist there. And the fungus, the mold, doesn't exist there. Cans of beef from 1917 sit on the shelves. These cans, they'll last two, three more centuries easily. Meat still hangs on metal hooks, appearing quite edible even after almost a century. In some cases, extreme cold has preserved flesh for thousands of years. In the 1928 Explorers Club meeting in Paris, they ate mastodon. Some mastodon came up through the ice, and they got it, and they cooked it up, and they served it at the dinner. And I had a friend there, and I asked him, I said, how did it taste? And he said, well, it tasted a lot like rotten meat. But it's been buried in the ice for 10,000 years, and, uh, and it would. But it's edible. Ten thousand years after people, almost all traces of mankind and its culture are buried beneath vegetation and sand. Ten thousand years from now, there would certainly be some things that you would see, pyramids of Egypt perhaps, but very, very little of human existence would actually be recognizable in the absence of humans. The planet has become warmer even in the coldest places on Earth. Even in these areas where Scott and Shackleton built their huts, we may well start to see an increase in plant life, possibly even insects, organisms that would begin to increase the rate at which decay would take away those structures. In 10,000 years, it's improbable that those huts will still be there. In 10,000 years, the Earth itself will have buried most of man's cities. <laughs>